Hello there, this is Agri Talk right here on KTN Farmers TV. My name is Kelvin Nyakundi. Today we'll be talking about climate change and its effects on animals. And we have Sam Kimeli here, who is the executive director, Cross Border Agen uh, Agency for Cross Border Pastoralist Development, and is here to just talk to us about this and how we as individuals can make sure that we take care of the environment and in turn make sure that our animals benefit from this. Welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks, viewers. My name is Sam Kimeli. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the executive director, Agency for Cross Border Pastoralist Development, APAD. We are based in Turkana, uh, implementing programs to the Turkana parts of West Pokot County and uh, the cross border uh, along the Kamele Kaka. All right. So when we talk about APAD, what does it really mean? You can just explain to us the history of APAD and what prompted it to start. Thank you so much. Uh, APAD began as a community-based organization way back in 2002. Uh, it was formed by Elite from Loima sub-county uh, that borders Uganda. Uh, it was mostly because of the conflict around them within that corridor, mm -hmm. and they thought, why don't we have one organization which can champion uh, peace building as well as other developmental uh, initiatives within, within, the, within the area. Of, within the, the, area. Mm -hmm. uh, the organization uh, has, been, has been working since 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, it has transformed from a CBO to an NGO. It was actually registered as a, as a non community organization by the NGO board mm -hmm. uh, in September 2019. And then we've also uh, moved from the initial peace building thematic area to other thematic uh, focus, as well as the uh, area of coverage. Uh, because I mentioned that we began from Rayma sub county, but we moved to other sub counties to the Tukana county. Mm. And even across the border in uh, parts of northern Uganda, uh, southern Sudan, as well as parts of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So um, when you speak about uh, you moving to these areas, um, are you moving? Uh, because you're doing some projects or some organizations that you're dealing with are doing projects with you in order for you to expand to these areas? Uh, mostly we move there because of the need. One, for example, uh, what's implementing now, we have uh, the, the Dunkley Welfare Project, which implementing across uh, the entire Tokana County, as well as across the border in uh, Uganda, mm -hmm. of course, in partnership with organizations in Uganda. Uh, so it's mostly because of the need in those particular areas. Uh, and also, uh, I mean, once we identify the need, then we are able to maybe seek for funding for those particular uh, gaps and address them as APAD. Mm -hmm. And when we speak about um, animals, uh, are we speaking about a certain type of animals or are we speaking animals in general? Uh, when we talk of animal welfare, we talk of uh, for all, the, all the, I mean, animal welfare in general. But uh, in this particular case, we are focused a lot more on the donkey. Mm -hmm. uh, as you are aware, the donkey often is left out in different mm -hmm. interventions, both by uh, development partners and even government. And so for us, we really felt, why don't we focus on the donkey? And more so because when you realize that uh, some of these uh, other areas, Lukana being, being one of them, mm -hmm. the donkey plays a very key role, mm -hmm. both in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, providing park transport and uh, uh, social socioeconomic uh, importance as well as uh, even the cultural uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So for us, we are focusing a lot on the donkey. Uh, animal welfare, yes, but particularly on donkey welfare. Uh, all right. And when, when you speak about focusing on the donkey, um, what are you looking at? Are you looking at the way um, you can teach farmers to take care of this donkey, or you're teaching farmers to how to um, make sure that they expand the way uh, they're maybe taking care of it of the donkey in order to make sure that at least a donkey is treated the same as maybe the livestock it is also given an opportunity to um, flourish in the farm uh, sure we have uh, of course we don't work in isolation we have other partners uh, within uh, within uh, the country uh, different parts of the country mm -hmm. uh, all, all of us funded by uh, blue east africa as well as other animal welfare organizations for example the donkey sanctuary so we have the alliance for uh, donkey welfare working with organizations in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We have quite a number of partners in different parts. Kitui, uh, we have Kretas Kitui, we have Sendakao Kenya, we have KVA, we have FSK, we have Kendat, we have uh, Inades Formation, Matakos, we have uh, Stipa back in Nyanza and parts of Western Kenya. So we don't work in isolation. We work uh, as a, I mean, we work under the umbrella to ensure that welfare issues are, are, are given the, the much needed uh, attention. 
uh, looking for uh, looking at different aspects of it, right from policy, just to ensure that yes, we have welfare included in the different uh, uh, county level, uh, uh, I mean, left of policies. For example, uh, in Turkana, we did lobby to ensure that uh, we have animal welfare uh, included in the, uh, the Turkana livestock uh, bill of 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, the same has been done by other ad hoc partners as well within the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. We also mm -hmm. do uh, quite a lot of uh, awareness, uh, training them on uh, how they can, uh, for example, uh, harness, better harness the donkeys. In Turkana, for example, they do, they do pierce the sputum so then they're able to restrain. So we, that's a welfare issue. So we train them on alternative ways on how they can restrain the donkey without having to fear the sputum. Mm. Uh, we also, of course, uh, uh, sensitize them a lot on uh, how they can better take care of the donkey so they can produce better. For example, uh, uh, ensuring that they, they have enough water, they have enough food. Uh, I mean, they, they don't walk long distance without rest. They have, they have uh, I mean, at least they have that freedom. We have the five freedoms, the five animal freedoms. So we teach them to ensure that those animal freedoms are well um, considered. Mm -hmm. uh, we also treat them. Uh, actually, most of the partners, including APAD, have vet, veterinary, veterinarians mm -hmm. or other veterinary officers who treat these donkeys uh, whenever we go out there. Mm -hmm. Common conditions, for example, uh, maybe bites. Uh, we have wounds. We also have uh, 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 hoof, hoof management because in some cases, when the hoofs overgrow, then that affects the working of the, of the donkey. Mm -hmm. So we have those three aspects. We have the policy, 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 policy front, community engagement, as well as uh, treatment. Uh, in the treatment, we also uh, look at how do we uh, influence other service providers rather than our, our own vets to ensure that then donkeys are also included in their in the in the in the, in the agenda. Mm -hmm. How how do how do we ensure that we even have pain relief uh, drugs for the, for the donkeys? Uh, so we also work very closely with them. We work very closely with the county government vets in the different areas of our operation, mm -hmm. just to ensure that then they are also able to understand that yes, the donkeys do get sick. Uh, don't forget that uh, we have a lot of myths that donkeys don't get sick. So ours is to create when and tell them, yeah, donkeys do get sick, and if possible, when you go for the outreaches, please do consider donkeys as well. Mm -hmm. And. Um let me just cut you short and ask you about the when you, when it comes to um, the donkey being treated um, inhumanely. Can I I can use sure. inhumanely because you find um, many of the people who, uh, as years have gone by, we know the donkey is for carrying goods. It's for uh, maybe uh, just carrying goods to the market, helping goods reach. It's 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 used in transport. So are you also teaching? Um, people on how to make sure that it's used or of course for transport but it's not really mistreated to a way where maybe you say um it's it has not eaten maybe for like a week or for two days just drinks water yes uh, just explain to us about this uh thanks we also have uh, yeah we do, we do a lot of awareness on the same uh we also have legal provisions for the same for example the cap 360 which has very clear legal provisions on uh uh, on, on the treatment of uh, animals, on the cruelty, the cruel treatment of animals. Uh, we work very closely with the police and other law enforcement agents to ensure that whenever these uh, acts of uh, cruelty are, are identified, mm -hmm. then actually it's taken against the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And now let's just change gears and move to climate change and effects of climate change on animals. And uh, the way you've explained to us very well where you deal with the... the Place, the areas in Kenya where you really focus on, and even outside Kenya, are areas that are as regions. Sure. So what, when maybe the president names um, these areas as a drought, um, like a drought as a national disaster, and then um, calls these areas as the areas that are being affected, then what do you do when, it, when, when, it, when such an announcement is made? Uh, one is, uh, of course, we are always uh, cognizant of the fact that drought is yet to stay with us. Uh, some of the effects of uh, climate change is the recurrent drought. Uh, this, this year, last month, that was in March, sorry, in April, uh, the drought was so severe in parts of uh, northern Kenya, mm -hmm. including Wajia, even Chukana. Actually, according to NDMA, some of the level zones were actually at emergency. 
uh, that was quite severe. Mm -hmm. So for us, what we do is uh, one, we ensure that the health of the of, of the livestock, especially the donkeys, is uh, is well taken care of. Treatment, uh, deworming the donkeys to ensure that then they are strong. Yes. Uh, we also do quite a lot of uh, uh, supplementary feeding, uh, through provision of hay, uh, range cubes, just to boost their additional uh, additional um, additional uh, strength. Uh, we also do a lot of uh, water trucking. We burn with pair of boreholes, and of course, we do a lot of training, capacity building communities on disaster risk reduction, on strategies on which they can do it. They can uh, really uh, ensure that animal welfare is well taken care of. Mm -hmm. And in these regions, you find that many people really follow tradition. They are they are really rooted in the tradition. They there are things maybe they they have been used to doing, and. Um, when you go to tell them to maybe change and do a different thing, then you might get resistance. Do you usually get resistance, or um, how is the embrace of the program? Uh, I would say the, the program has only been embraced very well in a lot of these areas because, one, the communities uh, identify and do appreciate the donkey as a very important um, animal. One is there are areas where you cannot reach in some of those other areas. Mm -hmm. For example, when, um, when, uh, when these communities take their produce mm -hmm. to the market, when they take, for example, uh, charcoal to the market, when they go to the relief distribution centers to fetch, uh, to, I mean, to, 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 to carry back food home, uh, when they go to fetch water for the young ones, the young ones of maybe uh, the kids, and the young ones of the... Um, I mean, or, 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 the, or, the, or, the, or the people who are left at the homestead, mm -hmm. when the others migrate, these donkeys are very, very key. So they do appreciate what we do. Uh, and of course, also, our strategies are very, very uh, uh, dynamic, or rather, they are very context-specific. Uh, uh, the way, for example, a partner would approach uh, the whole uh, capacity building in, for example, a high potential area, Nairobi, Limuru, and other areas, is very different from there with the approach in our areas. Mm. In uh, those other areas, chiefs still hold so much power. The elders still hold so much power. So those are some of the structures which we use then to ensure that the message sings home and is supported by the communities. Mm. All right. And when, when it comes to uh, taking care of this uh, animal, you've really mentioned, you talk about the donkey. Uh, when you're giving such animals care, and you're in these regions, and, uh, you know, lack of uh, access to water is one of the major issues that when it comes to taking care of animals in such regions. So how do you make sure that these um, animals are being taken care of in the right way and they're not uh, being given water that is um, maybe not suitable for them? Uh, one thing is that we have structures, different structures at the community level. We have, for example, the Chiefs, uh, Chiefs Forum, we have, uh, for example, uh, we, have, we also have an organization known as ADOC. ADOC is the uh, Association of Donkey Owners of Kenya. So we have different, for example, we have the Turkana branch. So they have members all over. We have other structures, for example, um, what we'd call the livestock marketing organizations. They are, they are spread out across all over in the, all, all, all over in the county. Mm -hmm. And that also includes other other areas. So we use different structures to ensure then that these people because, I mean, it's quite expensive. For example, Turkana is at 7,000 kilometers. We cannot reach out everywhere. Exactly. So we have those structures whom we work uh, through uh, very, very closely. And even for the high potential areas also, uh, they also work through different structures. Mm -hmm. We have the CSOs. Uh, CSOs uh, whom we have been able to really uh, sensitize. So whenever they, they come across some of these um, welfare issues, mm -hmm. they're able to address them. And if maybe they're not able to address, then they reach out to us. Mm. Uh, we also have uh, government uh, government uh, officers. Uh, for, like, for example, in Turkana, we have uh, uh, officers down even to the village level. Uh, from uh, last year, we have what we call village administrators. So we work very closely with them to ensure that then that these issues are able to be addressed. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have uh, different, um, for example, uh, different structures uh, through the different projects whom we work together. Uh, before in different projects, so then we are also able to lobby and uh, ensure that there is adherence or other uh, these welfare issues are being addressed. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we also have uh, for, uh, we also have, of course, the what I would call um, what I would call our champions. Over time, we've been able to convert some people. 
we've been able to have some key people mm -hmm. uh, get into uh, our, our weekly agenda. The media, for example. So we have media people out there. Whenever uh, they come across this, they, they, uh, they, they bring out the issues. We have very good working relationships with the media all over, not only for, for APAD, but even the other ad hoc uh, members as well. Mm -hmm. So then these media soldiers are able to reach out, uh, out, out there very well to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, during the COVID period, because of the restrictions uh, by, by the Ministry of Health, uh, we use a lot to those champions. Yes. We use a lot to the media who, are, who have been able to really champion the welfare agenda out uh, at the community level. Mm -hmm. And now, when it comes to um, you spreading to other counties, maybe in this um, part of Kenya where it, the, the drought is not really um, a prevalent issue, when you move, when you are trying to move uh, to such areas in the coming maybe years, would you would, would this be a program that you'd want everyone in Kenya to be involved in, or you just want people on the Asal regions to work on this? Uh, thank you. As I mentioned, we have different partners all over. We have, for example, Kendat uh, in Mwea, Nairobi, and uh, several other counties. Mm -hmm. We have FSK in Nakuru, Narok, uh, Baringo, and other, other, other counties. We have uh, Inades Formation in Machakos. We have Kaitas Kitui in, in Kitui, Kitui County. We have KVA in some of the, some of the counties. So, like, uh, actually, we are, I mean, we have, we, we have different partners in different areas. And our wish is that this would move all over the country, mm -hmm. uh, all over the country rather. And we also have other welfare uh, organizations, for example, Dunkey Sanctuary, whom we work very, very well. Uh, we have uh, Anau. Anau, we work very well with them. They're also part of the ad hoc. Mm -hmm. So that then we also have, I mean, we have tentacles all over. Not only in the upper, upper region, mm -hmm. but we also have uh, tentacles all over. Mm. And uh, maybe just for information, the programming, uh, approach is different in each of the context. Ah. For example, uh, what we do in Turkana would not be, I mean, what, what a partner does in, for example, Homer Bay is different from what we do in Turkana. It's mm. context specific. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, with the donkey central in the whole agenda. Mm. Yeah. And welfare as well. Mm -hmm. And even as you move towards um, expanding uh, in the rest of the country, uh, what is the government's contribution to you as an organization? Uh, one, uh, another other organization, we work very closely with the current Directorate of Veterans Services in Turkana. Uh, whenever we have, for example, outreaches, they would uh, part, we'd partner together. Maybe we would get about three or four of their vets because we only have one vet. Uh, then we are able to move, move out on outreaches. Mm -hmm. We've also been working together on uh, the policy, trying to ensure that then welfare is factored well into the Turkana County electoral policy. Mm -hmm. All right, and let's also go back to now climate change, uh, where we were speaking about how um, we as individuals can take care of the environment. And let's look at this. So climate change is always a recurring issue all the time. Uh, uh, you hear climate change this year, year in, year out. So going forward, as we are moving into um, the electioneering period and then everything else will be taken over by elections, so um, how can we as individuals continue to maintain um, the state of our animals and making sure that the donkey is taken care of uh, even during this time? Uh, one is, uh, of course, politics uh, is part of our, of our life. Uh, but uh, we need to really uh, focus and ensure that uh, we double our efforts. And uh, of course, politics uh, will come in at some point, but we really have to focus on the main focus and double our efforts to ensure that, uh, to ensure that uh, policy, I mean, uh, welfare is uh, well, uh, well taken care of. Mm. Uh, I would also talk of uh, policy, policy, the policy front, where uh, just to ensure that then we have uh, climate change uh, legal frameworks. I'm happy to note that, for example, in Turkana, we have the Turkana uh, Climate Change uh, uh, Bill of 20, uh, no, sorry, Act of 2021. Yeah, so uh, I mean, if those are politicized, then we are going to ensure that even despite the political uh, environment, changes in the political environment, then we still have uh, policies which can guide uh, climate change issues. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, what, is, what is it that we can do different in order for this not to be happening? Of course, 
we've been having these climate uh, yeah. forums, yeah. climate change forums, yeah. people being um, made aware of what they need to do, but we still keep on having the same issue. So what do you think, in your opinion, from where you sit, what do you think we can do in order to make sure that we tackle this um, problem? Uh, one, I think the first thing, uh, the change begins with us. We need to identify uh, what we can really do at that individual level. But more important is awareness. Uh, you realize that there are quite a number of gaps in terms of uh, climate change information. Mm. So there's need to really move out there and create a lot of awareness. Our communities out there, when, uh, I mean, they, they, they don't understand climate change. So we really need to move out and ensure that they understand that very well. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to apologize, as I mentioned, some of these frameworks, even at that local level. Uh, of course, that will cascade upper. To the, I mean, oh, sorry, that will, that, that will move upper to other levels of uh, policy implementation. But there's need to really uh, focus a lot more on that at that county level to ensure that those legal frameworks are questions and they are for the better of the communities. Mm. All right, then, there you have it. We're going for a short break. We'll be right back with more. We've been speaking to Sam, who has been explaining to us what we need to do as individuals in order to make sure that we take care of the environment and also the donkey as an animal. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. We'll be right back with more. then welcome back this is agri talk right here on ktn farmers tv and today we are talking about climate change and its effects on animals and we are focusing on the donkey and we've been speaking to sam uh, who is here to from upper and is here to explain to us about this and what we can do in order to make sure that we um save this animal from uh, um, from malnutrition for even um mistreatment from people welcome back thank you Kelvin. All right, so yesterday was um, Wild Donkey Day, and we have um, National Donkey Day coming on the 17th. So um, explain to us about Wild Donkey Day and what it means. Yeah, Wild Donkey Day is celebrated uh, on the 8th of May, and uh, we recognize this enduring animal, uh, which, was, which is part, was part of the Equid, uh, equid uh, Kingdom. Uh, the role of the donkey in supporting livelihoods is very, very key. Right from the earthen areas, go to high potential areas, and uh, we really thought it's important that we celebrate this, 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 this animal. Mm -hmm. uh, on the 17th of uh, May, every year, we also celebrate the National Donkey Day. Uh, we have, uh, uh, I mean, uh, planned activities by different partners across, across the country. For example, uh, mass treatments, we have uh, songs, we have different activities to celebrate the day and to recognize some of the champions uh, in the, in the I mean, in Donkey Welfare. Uh, more important for, for this year's theme, we are celebrating the contribution of the donkey in economic development. Mm. Uh, Kelvin, uh, recently, when we had a uh, fuel shortage, donkeys were quite reliable in terms of transport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know if you remember about two months ago, during the water registration, some places in Turkana actually donkeys were used to ferry the yes. IEPC materials mm. at some of the of the polling centers. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this 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 animal plays a very very key role. And so during the National Donkey Day, we celebrate uh, for this year's theme. We are celebrating the donkey as a major contributor to 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 economic development mm -hmm. and of course even the different SDGs. Mm. Yes. All right. Even as we speak about the advantages of uh, the donkey and what it really adds to um, the transport sector, we've also been having um, issues, especially when it comes to uh, trade, the hide trade. And we've been having issues. Uh, you find that um, it's being traded outside even the country. And this has been a, a major issue for years now. So speak to us about this. Uh, yes, indeed, Kelvin. Uh, around 20, 2016, between 2016, according to a Cairo report, actually, yes. done in June 2019, uh, about 300,000, 301,000 donkeys were slaughtered between 2016 and 2018. Uh, that brought about the population down uh, from the initial uh, uh, about 1.8 mm -hmm. uh, in the census of 2020, 20, 20, 
I mean, 2019, to the census, no, 2019. So there was a, a drastic, uh, a drastic reduction in the numbers of donkeys, and uh, good enough through lobbying from uh, ad hoc, uh, different stakeholders, and donkey owners themselves, uh, we were able to secure uh, a ban uh, by, by, the, by, the, by, the, by the minister. Uh, but now, after the closure of the of this of this of the abattoirs, mm -hmm. which were in uh, Naivasha, uh, Baringo, Turkana, and uh, Machako, we've seen uh, some increase in donkey hide trade, especially in some parts, including Turkana. Uh, we had a study uh, last uh, late, 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 last uh, late last year, which indicated that there are still a lot of donkeys, donkey hides, and as well as smuggled donkeys, stolen donkeys which cross over from uh, Ethiopia mm. to Kenya, mm. from South Sudan to Kenya, as well as from Uganda to Kenya. Mm. So there's still a lot of uh, donkey hide trade ongoing, and we call upon all the stakeholders to ensure then that uh, that, st uh, that stops because uh, it is a threat to pastoralist livelihoods, mm -hmm. and not only pastoralists, but even uh, communities uh, would depend on donkeys in the high protection areas. Mm -hmm. And with this, with this kind of report from Calro, and um, you can imagine maybe now, since 2019 up to now, if a survey was done, you can imagine the numbers that maybe would have, uh, you would have, you, you'd, you'd find. So as we go uh, forward, and the species also of the donkey, do you think it's a species that is um, bound to continue or it will keep on depleting? Uh, according to uh, the survey, Kelvin, sorry, the, the, the study by Carlo, mm. uh, by clinical inferior uh, Kelly, uh, that rate of, uh, I mean, 1,000, 1,200, about 1,400 uh, donkeys every day, the rate of slaughter uh, was higher than the rate of production. Mm. Also, the donkey is a hard breeder and takes about about more than 12 months uh, decision period. So, uh, I mean, at that, at that rate, we're going to have not done at some point. Wow. And even now, even uh, and even now, as we as we as we speak, there's still a lot happening out there. And maybe the most important thing would be to remove the donkey as a food animal, because uh, the donkey was considered as a, as a food animal in 2019, and that then opens a leeway for some of these commercial uh, commercial uh, traders to do commercial harvesting of donkeys. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you speak about uh, food, um, it being recognized as a food, um, and is it allowed in Kenya? Uh, is it, are there stipulations that say that um, donkeys are allowed to be uh, put on the butcheries and hung there? Because, of course, living in Kenya, you can, um, in major towns, you usually hear that the donkey meat is being sold. So what is, um, what is your reaction on this? Uh, well, I would say yes, donkeys, the community which consumes consume donkey meat. In Turkana, for example, donkeys are slaughtered every day. Mm -hmm. We have about seven slaughter slabs within Dodo Town alone. We have others in Lokchogyo, we have others in Kaukuma, we have others in Lokcha. Uh, of course, in addition to those ones at the, at the village or other the small, small centers. So uh, I believe it was a good intention then to ensure then that, uh, I mean, people would uh, consume well, inspectively and all that. But uh, it, it has become a loophole so that commercial uh, traders are uh, taking advantage now to ensure that, I mean, to, to really do mass slaughter of donkeys. Mm. But yes, there are communities who consume donkeys, to kind of be one. Uh, and even across the border in Karamajong, a lot of uh, Karamajong do consume donkeys as well. Mm -hmm. And even as we speak about um, the slaughtering and the um, hide trade, we also know uh, you've spoken about uh, it being used in transport. And you find that in, in areas like Kirinyaga, it's being used to transport pro uh, produce to, uh, to areas like Nairobi. It's one of the major um, um, uh, transport um, contributors to products that are being sold in markets in Kirinyaga. And in turn, you find that those products get their way to Nairobi. So as we continue um, with this maybe if they are depleting these effects are going to even even affect the businesses so what do you think um, is going to be um, the effects on business years that are coming yeah definitely uh, it's going to really affect livelihoods uh, maybe just to mention also is uh, that uh, during the cultural uh, study 
it was found out that uh, uh, every month, a household is able to earn 11,390 Kenya shillings from one donkey. Hmm. So you can imagine if if if, uh, if 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 those communities, I mean, those owners don't have those donkeys, how they survive. Two, uh, a lot of uh, women uh, depend on the donkeys. Actually, in most of these other areas, mm -hmm. the donkeys could be owned by men, but they use by women. For example, uh, in Masai land, they are called them Kemwenza. Because uh, once, I mean, once they lose a donkey, then they would have to go fetch the water uh, themselves from the, from the water points or from the rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, you go to Rongai today, uh, Kelvin, there's so many donkeys with fed water. So, I mean, it would really be an, uh, it would have a great effect on uh, community livelihoods. Mm. I mean, uh, in the other areas, it's even worse because, one, these, uh, the areas where border borders cannot reach. Uh, bear in mind that, for example, in Tukana, more than 20,000 person is crossed into Uganda every year in search of water and pasture. And, and, and pasture. They use the donkeys to cross the border to carry uh, the young ones, the household items, the sick uh, across the border. So without donkeys, they would not be able to move to migrate, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so it would be very, very uh, catastrophic if we didn't have donkeys. Mm. And also, um, you've mentioned um, it being used to transport water. It, it, also in Lamu, it's used as a, tr as a way of uh, transporting people uh, through the, the, the town. All right, let's move on and now look at um, some of the ways in which uh, farmers or uh, people who keep donkeys can be trained to take care of the animal. So, for example, um, can a donkey be taken care of as um, a pet? Uh, well, one, you know, most people have myths about donkeys, that mm -hmm. donkeys are, are not friendly. But would you know that donkeys are some of the most friendly and intelligent uh, mm. equites? All yes. right, I didn't know. Teach, tell yes. us, tell us yes. about it. No, uh -huh. actually, uh, donkeys are quite, uh, they're quite obedient. Mm -hmm. Unlike, I would say, maybe other, other animals or maybe other livestock. So if you're able to treat it well, it will give you very good service. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give an example. Uh, I have a neighbor who owns donkeys. One time he overworked the donkey. And after the donkey uh, beat him, <laughs> beat him on the hand and it cried. Yeah? Wow. He didn't believe it. Mm. Yes. So, I mean, these are, that tells you something about the donkey. Yes. Mm. And when, when the donkey is um, carrying goods, is there a certain amount of weight it can carry? Or... Um, what, what can it carry like large amounts of goods or is there a specific certain amount of good that is supposed to carry? Uh, ideally, it should not be uh, more than half its body weight. For example, if it is, uh, if it is uh, maybe a couple of jerkans, maybe about two jerkans, that should be enough. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, uh, but often mm -hmm. we find uh, there are cases of uh, overloading and uh, that also leads to a lot of those welfare issues mm -hmm. overworking the donkey. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a I mean, I mean with, with that and maybe poor harnessing is when you get some of those donkeys have lesions and uh, wounds all over. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, when you speak about community lobbying and where you are talking to, uh, to the community, um, is it um, your mandate to uh, teach the young people on how to treat this animal? Because a young, a young person goes out there with a donkey they are beating the donkey seriously uh, to move, or um, a person who doesn't have um, experience with the donkey. So how are you teaching them to uh, take care of this animal also? Uh, thank you very much, Kelvin. As I mentioned earlier, we have different structures. We have the donkey care clubs. Uh, we even have what we call uh, donkey care clubs, uh, uh, clubs within the schools. We thought, why don't we start nurturing some of these children when they're still young? So that welfare is instilled, uh, I mean, uh, among the values, mm -hmm. so that then even when they grow up, they're able to do take good care of the donkeys. Uh, and for those ones who, are, and for the youth, we have different uh, approaches. For example, uh, Kendat in uh, in Moya have worked very closely with the youth. Uh, we have other organizations that are also working very close with the youth to ensure then that uh, these youth are sensitized on welfare and uh, and even the legal frameworks against uh, beating the donkeys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now in Trukana, are the farmers who sell their donkeys, do you feel like there's a way in which um, maybe certificates are supposed to be given or there are regulations that a farmer needs to have 
to sell their donkeys because uh, these donkeys, the way they reach the other, the other uh, side is through trade maybe in the, in the border. So what, what do you think needs to be done? Uh, one is, uh, of course, we have a lot of porous borders along the entire, uh, I mean, the entire Kalamida cluster. And that also applies to different other border, border lines. Uh, when I talk of Kalamida cluster, Kelvin, I mean, from all the way from uh, West Pokot, uh -huh. uh, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan, uh, as well as Kenya, Ethiopia, that's the Kalamida cluster. Uh, or cluster one as uh, Iga de it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have a lot of porous borders, and uh, much, the much we can do is uh, we work through some of those cross border peace committees. We have cross border peace committees who are very, very uh, uh, active in ensuring that some of that movement is, uh, is controlled. Uh, we also have the chiefs who regulate that to ensure that uh, stolen donkeys don't find their way across the border. We so see, of course, as I mentioned, are, these are porous borders, eh? so we still have cases of one or two uh, donkeys which find their way either into Uganda or into Kenya mm -hmm. illegally. Mm. Yes. All right, and we had spoken earlier about um, this species of the donkey reducing and by mm. the way you mentioned by 2023, maybe the numbers will be so down. So how do we maintain and maybe the number that is there so that it increases as the years go by? Uh, one is, uh, of course, with the ban on the commercial slaughter, as I mentioned, this, the first slaughters were doing about 1,200, about 1,400 mm -hmm. every day, uh, which was actually so high compared to the production rate. Uh, one is, of course, closing the, I mean, the closing of the abattoirs. Uh, that has really helped. Two is uh, uh, sensitive communities. And of course, uh, uh, we don't have an issue with communities who consume donkey meat because that's sustainable. If you came to Sukana Kelvin, you'd be surprised. You don't just slaughter donkeys anyhow. They'll do, and not everyone eats donkey meat in any case. Yes. Uh, so they just do maybe one or two. Uh, in Lodo, maybe they do about three or four in a day. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 commerce, that, uh, community, that community slaughter, that is sustainable. What maybe we would really describe is the commercial, uh, commercial harvesting or rather the commercial slaughter of donkeys. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now let's, let's also look at the closing of the abattoirs. Because um, um, you, it might be there. But some, some, of course, you can't miss some people who backdoor, open, and do their own things. So, how are you, um, as an organization, making sure that these um, regulations are being followed? One is, uh, of course, uh, after, after the after, after the the ban was issued by uh, Honorable Munya, the minister. Uh, this was cascaded down to the different CDVSs. Yes. That is the county, uh, county directors, directors of paternity, uh, paternity services mm -hmm. in the various uh, counties where these abattoirs were. And the order was that they should be closed. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's, it was a government, uh, government uh, regulation. Uh, as to how we ensure that some of these slaughter is not happening, as I mentioned, we have uh, what we call ADOC. Uh, uh, that is the Association of Donkey Owners of Kenya. They're all over. So uh, there's a lot of surveillance happening. Uh, to ensure then that uh, there's no uh, there's no uh, mass slaughter of donkeys anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, since um, the the regulations were imposed, and uh, people followed them, um, can you say there has been improvement on how um, this animal is being treated? Oh yes, I would say uh, there's been a lot of awareness, and that 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 continues. For example, when uh, I mean the National Donkey Day. As I mentioned, partners are doing different activities all over. Mm -hmm. We have uh, partner activities in uh, different counties. We also have maybe an activity at the national event, uh, maybe a radio talk show or something. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of awareness being created every other day mm -hmm. in different parts of the country mm -hmm. by different, uh, different partners. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, so let's move on. For example, we as individuals, as we've uh, been speaking today about climate change and effects on the animals, what can we do? What can an individual do in order to help in this fight? Uh, thanks, Kelvin. Uh, as I said, uh, sorry, as, uh, as I mentioned with the climate change, it begins with you and I. Could we be uh, agents of change? Could we be champions of welfare? Could we start from uh, uh, our neighborhood? Could we start mobilizing different communities just to understand 
what Fair Play is all about mm -hmm. and how that contributes to the production or rather the, the efficiency of the, of the dam. Mm. Yes. And also, um, APAD as an organization, um, as you also speak about the donkey and also the animal welfare, um, what are you telling the communities on uh, climate change sustainability? Uh, thanks, thanks, Kelvin. Uh, one, uh, of course, that welfare is integrated into, into our other uh, program areas. Uh, we just uh, closed out uh, a governance project. And everywhere we go, we we'll always mention welfare and also DHT, that's the like high strain. Mm -hmm. uh, two, uh, we also try to bring on board other partners, other CSOs who are doing other, other I mean, other works. Mm. So that then uh, we are able to reach out to more, more, more numbers. Yes. And we're able to uh, influence more people to really be young champions. Mm -hmm. And finally, as we uh, come to a conclusion today, so what would be a parting shot today? Uh, my parting shot today would be Let's take good care of the donkeys. These donkeys, these are the invisible, uh, invisible workers. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to be appreciated more. Mm -hmm. We need to uh, focus on uh, lobbying for inclusion of animal welfare uh, uh, within our different county, uh, county bills. And two, uh, I believe there's even a greater need to lobby for uh, exclusion of donkey as a meat animal. Mm. All right. There you have it. Um, we've been speaking to uh, Sam Kimeli, who um, has just been explaining to us about the donkey and the importance of the donkey. So you at home, ask yourself, are you really taking care of the donkey or mistreating it, as we've heard today? My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Today we've been speaking about climate change and the effects of this on the animal, and especially the donkey. We'll meet same time, same place, right here on AgriTalk on KTN Farmers TV.